special day. <laughs> hey, Tyrone, John Crotty with Miami Heat. How you doing? Good. How you doing, John? Good, man. Uh, so, so for us coming in, you know, basically from out of town, looks like he got off to a slow start. Last five games, really got it going. What are you seeing as the as the major change from the from the start of the season to this great rhythm that you're in now over the last five games? Um, I think offensively, just um, understand where we're trying to get our shots from, um, who we want to be as a team, as far as attacking the paint, getting into the paint, and making the right play and right pass. And we did that early on in the season. We just didn't make shots. And, um, you know, our defense was pretty good, kept us in a lot of the games, but we weren't making shots, you know, at a high clip. So as of late, the last, you know, five, six games, we've been able to make shots, which has allowed us to, you know, get some wins. Ty, uh, Terrence is amongst the lead, league leaders in fourth quarter minutes, and clearly you trust him quite a bit to be in that closing lineup. What have you seen out of him as far as a leap this year to get that trust out of you in those closing lineups? Uh, this is maturity and growth, I think, um, on the defensive end of taking the challenge. Um, I think he's doing a good job of just, you know, his first couple of games, we kind of got on him, was messing with him a little bit. But after that, he's taking, you know, he's taking the responsibility of being a great defender. And, you know, when PG's getting tired and getting worn down, when Bledsoe goes to the bench, you have to be that next guy. And um, he's really stepped up and done that. Um, you know, like I said, making his open shots, rebound the basketball, attacking in transition. So he's been really good for us. Hey, Ty. Hello. Um, what, what are explosive box jumps, and, and what does it mean to you guys that, that Kawhi is doing them? Um, yeah, jump up on this table. Just, you know, just seeing him active and, you know, being able to, like I said, jump and, you know, progressing the way he is. I mean, it's just good to see, you know, so that's about it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yeah. You and uh, Spolster are both in the top – Four in terms of um, winning percentage. What is it about Spolstra that you admire, coach to coach? Um, I think just his accountability. I think holding guys accountable, but also his temperament on the sideline. Like he's never going crazy. He's never shouting. He's never cursing. Um, and when you got coaches like that, you give your you give your players confidence, and um, that's what he does. And just seeing him on the sideline, he never loses his cool. He never goes off. And um, that's just somebody I watch and study as well. Just how he carries himself and. You know, how he dealt with LeBron and D-Wade and Bosh, you know, and that crew as well. Just always under control, you know, always at ease and always poised. And that that rubs off on your team as well. I saw that you, um, you guys sent Serge down to the G League, get some minutes um, running eight or nine deep today, I believe. What are you kind of hoping to get Serge um, there that you couldn't really get here? Um, I didn't send him down to the G League for one. Well, he was in the G League. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He day. wanted he wanted to get down and just okay. yeah, you know, Thanks find his fine. yeah, find his rhythm. Um, you know, he said right now just the game is a little fast for him, so he wanted to to go down to the G League and just play and just get reps, get his conditioning up, get his timing, and um, you know, which is you know when you got a guy like that as a what 13, 14 year vet, you know, um, that's a true professional or just trying to do what he can to get back and, you know, and help us out in any way he can. So, um, you know, so that was good to see. Thank you for clarifying that. Have yeah. you seen that before where a guy asked to go down there? I mean, I mean, I saw, I've seen it before, you know, when guys are practicing and just trying to get, you know, get familiar and haven't played in a while, but to come play a couple of games and then go back down, I don't think I've ever seen that, but that just shows you the professional he is. And that just shows you about our team and how we're willing to sacrifice um, to get to what we're trying to get to. Hey, Ty, uh, going back to Miami Connections, and you have Dan Craig. This is his second season along with you on this coaching staff. And you know, like a lot of guys were talking about, not just you Tuesday night, but a lot of guys were talking about, you know, his uh, defensive emphasis. So just how's that been working with him, you know, coming from the Miami staff? Oh, it's been great. You know, um, DC's did a great job last year, um, doing a great job this year. You know, um, when you lose a guy like Kawhi Leonard, who's a, you know, top three defender in the NBA, and, um, now you're still top three, I think top three or top four in defense. And that just means a lot, you know, about um, the foundation he's laid as far as defensively, you know, coming from Miami where they've always been a tough defensive minded team and to bring that here with us. Um, he's been phenomenal. Hey, Coach Eric Reed with the Heat. Uh, I don't want to leave out the obvious. Paul George is having such a fantastic start to the season. I'm just wondering what's impressed you most about the way he's played so far this year. Um, you know, we know he can score the basketball. Um, we know he's one of the top two-way players in the league. But I think just his defense this year, I think 
of flying around. I think deflection, steals. I think taking charges, diving on the floor for loose balls. Um, he really set the tone for our team early. I think defensively, when you have your best player, I'm um, going all out. You know the way he has defensively, it really means a lot to our young guys, and so they got to follow his lead. He's done a great job with that. Thank you. Recordings.